Hello dear friends! So in this tutorial I will show you how you can create this beautiful looking bowl, base, watertight one, using not Fusion 360 or other complicated CAD program, but no, using Tinkercad. And it's for absolute beginners, so if you have never worked with CAD, this one is for you. I'm going to do it very, very slow, so you won't miss anything. And I hope you find this educational. Please let me know under the video if you, if you were able to follow along and create the bowl here. And I would love to see your prints of it. This one actually holds water. I will show two methods. I will talk about two methods how you could do this. I decided to print mine using a 0.4 millimeter nozzle because I hate exchanging nozzles. So this one has two walls and I'm going to show you how to create that offset if you want to do it the same. In this video I will show you how to create a vase or a bowl using Tinkercad and not just a straight form. I'm going to use a, a very complicated looking form where you think oh my goodness this cannot be made with Tinkercad but I will show you that it is possible. By searching through all the forms because they keep on adding some to their list I came across and I don't want to scroll through all these because there are a lot of them you can create favorites yeah and so here are some favorites and I came across a form that is called pineapple and as you see the surface looks a little bit like a pineapple and I am sticking to the sizes that I have come up with when I created this tutorial and um, so because you can adapt here a lot of things and the radius that I used, in which, are, which turned out really nice, as you can see in the picture, this is what the finished vase looks like. So let's do it just the same. So here we're going to type in minus 100. Then in the off vertices we're going to type 25. And in the off strips, 10. Okay, you see, this is what it looks like. So it still doesn't look like mine. And if we turn it, so the mice, uh, right mouse uh, click, you can turn it like that. And if you turn the mouse wheel, you can go back and forth. You can zoom in. And if you hold the, the mouse wheel, if you hold it down, you can hover around. You can also turn the orientation here. Yeah. And we're like this view here now. So one thing that we want to take care of in this tutorial is that we change this here to 0 0.1. And we will also change the canvas that it is big enough. I'm using here 20, uh, 200 by 200. Okay. So as you see, this ananas here or pineapple is underneath the build table. So how can we change that? We simply click on it with the left mouse button. And then you see some things appear here. So what we want to do now is we want to click on this arrow here. And if you zoom in a little bit better, uh, if you zoom in, if you zoom in a little bit more, you can see it maybe better. Yeah, like that. And you can go up and down. And to have a control of where we are, I'm now looking at it from underneath. So you can also go like that. So if you move it up and down, you see here on the right hand side. You can see the offset. So it's at the moment, as we just heard, underneath the build table. So if we click in here, you can just put in 0 or 0, 0.0 and then enter. 
on the keyboard and now it is not underneath the build table anymore. As you see here, this thing now got a hole. And this is what we're going to take about, uh, care about later. But uh, yeah, so first things that we want to do is we want to change the size. As you see, this is still quite small. So here we are going to change that to 160. Enter. Oops, Daisy. You see, so I have to scroll out. Then little mouse button. And then click on this. You know, always when you click on the corners, you see this will appear here. And here we also got to type 160. Enter. Okay. Now to get it back on the build plate, we can just click on it and drag it over here. And one thing that will help us later, I will show you in a moment, is just let's change the height. This will be 104. 104. Enter. Ooh, you see? Now it looks already a little bit better. And now I'm going to introduce you to something that will help us throughout the whole work process. This is here the ruler. Excuse me, uh, as I am normally uh, in a German speaking environment, everything is shown here in, in German, but I will always explain everything. So you take the ruler here, you click on it, you drag it somewhere on the build plate, you just click on it and you see, yeah, once we click now on the pineapple, we see, remember the offset is now zero, the height that we type in is 104, and the dimensions will always stay. So you see it's 160 and 160. Yeah. Yeah, this would we don't have to take care of it. this is the offset because i'm not totally aligned somewhere i just put it somewhere but the the most uh important things we have here and it will always stay so the first thing we want to do now is we want to put in something that closes us this hole so we go in here and we take the simple forms and we just take this one here. Yeah, so we just drag it over here. It doesn't have to be on the build plate. And you see, because I have activated the, activated the ruler, everything already appears that we have to take care of. So as you see, when we go in a lot, if we zoom in a lot, we see that we have here, that doesn't look really like a circle. Now the closer we zoom in, the more we can see. It doesn't really look like a circle. But we can change that. We can go up all the way here and on the sides and also on the segments. But the bevel we will not change. I will show you what it looks like if we activate it and then it gets like a pillow shape. But we don't want to use that now. We just keep it on zero. And then what we're going to use there is 95. 95. Enter. Oops. <laughs> 90. Five, enter. You see now it's like a circle again. And the height we want to have 110. Now we were going to combine these two things. Yeah. We're going to move this over here. And there's a very handy tool to ensure that we are really centered. So what you can do is you can type on your keyboard. Control A, that means activate all. We have our both models. And you see up here, we can use this one here. This aligns it. It aligns it here to different parts that we can choose from. So we could align it here. Okay, but this is, you see, this, would, this is where, where it would move it. But we want to center it. So we click on this spot here. And as soon as it is centered in this direction, it turns gray. Here the same, it turns gray. If you go to the front, you see, we could also center it like that, but you know, see what happens? It lifts up our 
our ananas and we don't want to lift it up so we can go back and here we do that by hand you know we move down a bit like like that yeah, so it it ends up being under the build plate so that's important yeah it doesn't have to be centered just take care that the the disc here appears under the build plate and it also sticks out on the top that is important yeah. then we can click like that and activate those two but i feel safer when i uh, press Control a on the keyboard and then both are activated again so what we do now is we group this so this is here grouping we have to wait for a while and you see now it changes the color and as you see these are now one piece if we want to to separate them again we just click on the model and you see here we can deactivate the grouping and then it is two parts again okay so let's do that again we can go back or we can just do Control a and then this whole thing again great okay then we want to cut off this here and uh, we're going to do that because we're going to want, want a straight surface yeah so we're going to create a disc as you see here use this transparent thing here this is to create holes or to cut off something and here we will leave the height but we will change the diameter that it's going to be 140 by 140 and you see here we also need to go up here all the way and also with the sides so it looks really like a circle we're going to need two of them so instead of doing the same step again we can go up here and we can say copy and paste great so one side we will gonna pull up like that now let's go about let's type 100 here one hundred enter and then we're gonna take a look at it from above and we're just gonna grab it and just pull it over here and if i type now Control a i will not only activate the vase and this transfer ring here i will also activate this one so what we can do uh, we can just hide it so we click on this and you see now a bulb appears and this means hide it so later when we want to get the when we uh, want to see it again when we want to activate it we just click here and it will appear but be careful i don't know if uh, something was wrong with my internet connection but one time i deactivated some parts i went out to look at another construction that i had created i came back in later and i wanted to activate my my hidden parts again and it didn't work so i i'm not quite sure if it was on my side here or if it is a, a problem that tinkercad has so please be careful before you leave this this uh, window here uh, activate all your parts again but here now i will hide it and now i can type again Control a and then we can align this clicking here and here and then we want to cut it off so we can either type in something here to change the height and you see that this the the drops were still activated so please click somewhere here 
just to go into the normal modus again. Yeah, because I was in in this modus still from the alignment. Yeah. So please get rid of that first. Just click somewhere here, you see? And then when you click on here, then you can see the height. Remember, we just typed in 100. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to move up and down. And remember, we chose here 0 0.1. Why? Because if I choose 5 millimeters and I click in here, and I want to do it optically, I can only jump by five millimeter segments. So to have a little better refined movement, we go in 0.1 steps. We can still move it quickly, but the steps are very, very small. And you can see now, you see what happens? The, the gray, what you see here, this is the part that's going to be cut off later. Yeah. So when we move in a bit, when we take a close look here, you know, I'm working on a laptop, so it's maybe not that easy to see for me. And we move down. We just want to get rid of the, the purple stuff. You see, if you move in a lot, you see that it's still there. So we have to go down a little bit more. So I think we're going to have a hard time doing this here with the arrow. What we can do instead, we can just type here. 99 for instance yeah oh that was a, was a lot so let's go back and we're going to type in let's say 100 now yeah, so it goes out all the way here let's go a little bit higher let's say 100 Point ten. Uh, let's see what happens if we go only down, down a little bit. So now if we go control A and we group these, it will cut it off. And oh, it seems to be great. Let's go back. Oh, my cat is just coming in. So this is what it looked like in the beginning. Let's group it this way. Control A. My cat is really demanding a C. If we don't go low enough, we will end up with these obstacles here. We want to get rid of them. And you see that if we ungroup it, we tap here again. So this tenth must have been enough. 100. 40 enter now just click somewhere here and then control a so both are now highlighted again and then we group it and you see now these are gone yeah so we want to get rid of those so the same thing we do now on the lower end side and you know what i why i did this because this this donut here, this pineapple, you remember it went inwards, it had a curve here. And if we don't do that, um, yeah, by putting in this first, we cannot get rid of this internal stuff. Yeah, so this is why I put in this part first, and now I'm cutting it off. So let's bring back our second. Now, what we do next is we take care of, of this one here, we move it under here by hand. Then we click Control A, we center it here and here. Yeah, okay. And now we do the same thing down here as we have done up there. And you see, this is far too high now. So let me take a look. We just click somewhere, and we only want to click on this transparent thing here on this disk. And we take the handle, and you see at the moment this is zero because it's on the on the build platform. And if we pull this down, oh, take a look what happens. And you see here it's minus seven point five. The disc has the the height of the disc is twenty, so we have to go down minus twenty. So then we are below 
zero, you know, but you know, below the build plate, but on the build plate below zero. So zero, twenty. So those have to equal be equal. You see, like that. So it is touching the build plate, but from the opposite side. Okay, so from here, we take a close look. And now we go up as much as it takes to create a, a, a smooth surface like on the other side. So we take this here and we carefully go up. We can turn it upside down. And you see, we also want to get rid of these triangles here. Yeah. So we can do a bit by hand to get in a position that you still see this thing here. Not like that. See, here's the triangle and we push it up with our wheel, with our mouse. The entire mouse, you see it's still there. And let me see how, where we are now, which position. So let's try 16.5 minus 16.5. And to, just to get a feeling how much these minus 16.5 enter. Now let's move really, really close to see if this still, you see, it's still there. You have to get really, really close. See, there it is. Let's move out again. So take your time, please. Don't uh, hurry. 16.4. Uh, Enter. Then move. let's move in again. Okay, it seems to be gone. Yeah. And now what we do is we click Control A again and we group it. Ta da! And you see, one thing you, you have to be really care, um, to take care about is you see, if you just get rid of all these uh, things that are showing us the numbers, we see now it is floating. It is not on the build platform, yeah, but we want to get rid of that. So we click on this here and we see it has an offset at the moment. Yeah, this is because we cut it from, under, from underneath and we just, we could type in here or we can take the arrow, but I think this is really handy just to click in here and say zero, enter, and you see it snapped to the, to the ground, to the build platform. Okay, then the next step, let's look at the diameter. So we have here 160 and 160. So if you want to spiralize this vase, if it's only going to be a decorated vase and you have a 0 0.8 nozzle, you can just export it as it is. And then in the slicer, you choose in Cura or in Simplify 3D or in Prusa Slicer, there's an option you can highlight and it says spiralize. That will take care that this object only has a, a bottom shell. It has no top shell and it has one shell here to create the form. And if you have a 0.4 nozzle, the most you can, you can add on width on that one will be around 0.45. I wouldn't go higher now. Yeah? So with 0 0.5, 0 0.45, I tried it and I had some delamination in, in this part here. Yeah? In this area, it was strong enough, but here it, it uh, just didn't work. Yeah? And what you could do then is to exchange the nozzle, but I hate exchanging nozzles and I will show you a different variety of creating this bowl or vase, we are going to create it that it already looks like a vase. And we're going to have two walls, two walls of 0 0.45. That was the maximum you could go, remember, with a 0 0.4 nozzle. And two walls would be 0 0.9. 
So we're going to create an offset. And it took me a while to get it done. You know, I did it. Uh, it looked fine. It printed fine. Then I filled in water. And then it was still pouring from down here. Because here, these corners, uh, they always tend to still leak a bit. And now I made a, 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 the offset on the, on the bottom a little bit more than on the sides here. So let, let's do that. Yeah. We click on the part and we say copy, paste. And now we click in here, you see, because we can change it to a different color. So we're going to use yellow. Just click somewhere here outside. Grab your part and move it out of the way. And then we're going to change it yeah, in the size. So here we're going to type 158.2. Enter. So that is minus. 180. So because on both sides we have to um, make it 0 0.9 smaller yeah, to have this offset on both sides. Not only 0 0.9, 0 0.9 and 0 0.9. So that's 180. <clears throat> the other thing is we also have to take care of the height. So if we click on this one here and we take a look at the height, so we also have to lower this by 180. So this would be 95 millimeters. Okay. 95. Enter. So now we have this offset. Yeah. If we, if we put this one in here and we make a hole out of it, as you see, we can change this from solid to cut out, then we would have later on an offset of 0 0.8 here and 0 0.8 here. But as I told you, I lost water down here. So let's cut off a little bit more. So when we, from the lower side, so we click on here. Yeah, and what will we do? We create another one like this. We go up with the segments, go up with the size, sides. We create this one millimeter high. And how much did I choose for the diameter? 140 again, yeah, just to make it simple. Okay, just click in here and here. 140, it's bigger than, than we, we should be, but it's okay. So same things apply here again. So you can hold the shift key. You can click on here and on here. So you don't have to, to hide this one. Yeah, this also works because we cannot uh, choose now the, the control all because then this would also be chosen. Yeah. Then click here again and then just align it. Oops, okay. Click outside and you see now we're going to cut off a bit and we have to highlight these again and then say group and you see now we have this offset of one millimeter if I now take both of these and I do this the heights will be eviled out evened out on both sides but I don't want that I just want to have I just want to add another offset of these 0 0.9 on one side. Yeah. So what I will do now is I do this by hand. The, uh, this one rests on the on the ground, 
And this one here, we will add another 0 0.9. Because then we will end up here having, having the same thickness on the edge here that we have on the wall. So 1.9 further up. As you see, you just saw it moved. Now what we can do is we click on it and we say, yeah, make it like that so it will cut. And now <clears throat> what we will do, and you will see nothing because it's going to hide in there. And yeah, we're going to put it in here and we're going to, again, control A, then align it. Like that. Okay. And when we now do Control A, both are highlighted, but we'd only see one of them, and we combine them. Yeah, like that. Great. So we don't get uh, an, a messed up there. And now to see the actual bow that is hidden inside, we will cut off the lid. And we will take another disc and do the same thing again, like always. And that lid has to be uh, 114, but I don't know. Maybe it's, it, we will end up maybe with something else, 114. And just to be on the safe side, we will make this high 30, 30, enter. Okay, now we're just gonna lift it up like that. If I click on uh, and just move it here, center it again, control A, and like that, and like that. And if you want to move both parts uh, together, you have to click uh, Control A again. No? And now what we want to take care of is, do you see this, this upper part here? If we leave it like it is, it will it will create problems uh, when printing. So I found out that if you move to this edge here, the angle that we end up with will be like self-supporting. So we will only have to add some supports for this lower part here. If uh, yeah, if it uh, to be really on the safe side that it looks nice. Yeah. So this is why I said, I don't know what diameter I'm going to end up with. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to click on this upper part and we're going to change the size a bit. So we end up aligning with this edge here. Yeah? So let's just jump up to 115 and 115, enter. And now we are not aligned anymore, so control A. Yeah, this now maybe we have to do it a few times just un until we are really sh sure that it's spot on. Oh, you see, so that was already a little bit too much. So I guess when we use 114.5, it could be okay. Point five, enter. One hundred fourteen point five, enter. Control A. And click here again and here again. Let's go very close. Yeah, you see now it's nicely aligned. And I would just click somewhere here because we want to only activate this one now. And we will drop this a little bit further just to be sure that uh, we are hitting the internal set off that we have hidden in there. You see? So like that. 
And now control A and abracadabra. Ta da! You see, there is our bowl in all its beauty. And you can be very proud that you went from 0 to 100. Because if you show this to somebody that is using Fusion 360 and you tell them that you made this beautiful bowl in Tinkercad, they might not believe that this is possible. But you can treat, uh, show um, you you can show them that it is. And you see here we have a nice wall. I will export this now to to Fusion, and we can take a look what it looks uh, in the cross cut because the, yeah they don't have a cross cut uh, function here it would be really nice to have but it uh, they can't i don't know what this is here okay yeah this is something else so i will with, with you in a moment i will um start fusion 360. so to export your your um creation you click on it and if you don't want to just uh, change it anymore, it makes sense maybe just to lock it. Yeah. So you can, now you cannot move it or or uh, change any, anything here anymore. You see, if I click in it, it's it's locked. Now we can export it, and you see these are the file formats. We're going to choose STL. And be careful to to name it here to a name that uh, you like because randomly it, it <laughs> Tinkercad uh, gives those objects really crazy names. So you know, it's an export, and and then it's exported, and then you will find it in your download or um, uh, folder, and you can just export it to your slicer and print it. Here I am in Fusion three hundred sixty. You can download it for free on their website and if you use it only uh, for personal uh, models you don't sell anything you can use it for free for one year and then you have to subscribe again great but that will be later on <laughs> and what but what i want to show you is what it looks like so we can insert a mesh and we grab our base that we have just constructed and here it is and what we can do we just click on it and say inspect and then we can make a, a cross cut what is what is important here now is that we use a side like that and as you see here This is what the what the vase looks like. See the wall the walls are are nice and even, and the bottom is a little bit thicker.